You could turn in your Bibles to Somebody wants Hello, you are listening to Somebody Once Told Me, the podcast where we explore the voice of Christ and his church in the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. So, Psalm 6, and Mm -hmm. we are looking at verse 4 and 5. How about you read it out, Aaron, and I'll hit you with a question. Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you in Sheol who will give you praise. Okay, so here's the question. Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. It's a question that you were just saying to me beforehand, so I'm going to ask you something you pointed out. (laughs) Okay, who's doing the turning? Hmm. Is, say, this is the prayer of Jesus and his days on earth, maybe even in the Garden of Gethsemane, and is he saying, oh, Father, turn towards me, turn and deliver me, like, you know, asking for his attention, which is something we've seen previously in the yeah. Psalms. Or is it the other way around that he's asking, Father, would you turn me, change me, uh, do something with me? You know, yeah. is he asking to be turned? What do you yeah. reckon? Mm. Turn, O oh Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. I think more naturally it's that the Lord will turn his face towards us. That's more in line with the psalms, like, turn to us, O Lord Almighty, like Psalm 80, isn't it? Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, It is that. But then a a part of me was thinking, turning. Uh, This is a psalm of of confession. And And repentance is about... Repentance, yeah. Turning. It's about turning, and it's like, turn me, deliver me. And who does the... When we repent, whose work is it? Who does the Who does the repenting? Is it us? Or is it the Lord? So we ask, but he does the stuff in us. Yes. And then we find ourselves turning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he turns us. He repents us. And um, so, yeah, turn. He repents us. That's a good He repents phrase. us, yeah. It's interesting. You know in the parable of the sower, not mm. the sower, sorry, the parable of the, the lost sheep and the coin in Luke 15? Yeah. Um, Jesus calls that repentance. Like unless, so when when I see, yeah, uh, this uh, how much more if oh, I know what you mean when he then explains the parable when when the shepherd goes out to find the sheep, yes, he says how much more will um, he calls that repentance? Yes, but it's the shepherd going and turning the sheep. <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, that's that's so helpful. it's not the sheep going. I'm going to find my way back to the Lord now to my yeah. shepherd. The shepherd goes out. That was some good repenting I just did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The shepherd yeah. goes and finds and brings back, mm. and he calls that repentance. Yes, that is interesting. Okay. So um, you're saying, okay, so bring that to this verse. Yeah, bring that to this verse. Turn, O oh Lord, and me. deliver me. So do some turning within me. Yeah. Make me turn. Would you? We, yeah, and I think that's helpful for us to pray, isn't it? Like, turn me, <laughs> mm. deliver me. So either or, though. You're like, yeah. And yeah, also, I, I think probably... Lord, look at me, turn one. towards me, help me. Yeah. yeah, it could be that. It's probably the first one, okay. but... We like the second one, though. The second one, given, you know, other passages in Scripture about repentance, mm. we can be like, okay, yeah. We can maybe yes. think about that as well. Um, because of your unfailing love, this is something I know Steve Levy says a lot, um, the most important relationship in the Christian's life isn't yeah. my relationship with Jesus. But Jesus' relationship with the Father. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Steve Levy of the theme tune, everyone. Turn in your Bibles. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and that's so helpful, isn't it? That The unfailing love. Yeah. When we pray this psalm, which is obviously we're trying to help the listeners do that, pray Psalm 6, we're, we're taken up into this unfailing love. My love is failing. My love towards Jesus fails all the time. Yeah. And yes, it's true that his love to me is unfailing, but Mm. even more than that, there is this unfailing love between the Father and the Son. Yeah. And we we get caught up in that, don't we? Mm -hmm. So uh, I love that phrase, unfailing love. Yeah. And we can rejoice the fact that the Father did did turn. 
and showed his steadfast love towards the son. Exactly. For our sake. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because he, he speaks about, and this is why it makes sense him being in Gethsemane praying this. He now speaks about hell. Yeah. Hades, right? Yeah. In verse five, no one remembers you when he's dead. He's thinking about death. Who praises you from his grave or from, sorry, Sheol? From Sheol, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not Hades, Sheol. I there's forget. a difference, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's a difference. I was going to say, oh, it's interesting that the NIV has Hades because mine's got Sheol. <laughs> no, that's me getting confused. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the realm of the dead. Them. Yeah. Sheol, um, where the dead are waiting. It's mm. like they, they're dormant. They can't do anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's saying, look, what good is it? If you don't turn to me now, like, what good is it? I'm not going to be able to praise you if I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's now or never, which would make sense again at Gethsemane. It's like he yeah. knows his hour. John's very clear in his gospel on this. Yeah. He knew his hour was upon him. Yeah. He knew it's now. So it's like, look, you got to come now urgently and help me because I'm going to be dead. Yeah. And then there's no, yeah. No one can call out to you when they're dead, can they? So <laughs> I'm calling out to you now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It's um, it's the first instance in the Psalms where like, we've talked about Psalm um, 3, which it talks about uh, waking and sleeping, uh, sleeping and waking again. And we talked a little bit about like that's death and burial. Yeah. But this is the first Psalm which it explicitly talks about death. Yes, that's a good point. The first um, Psalm that explicitly talks about death. And it's, yeah. it's almost like it's the first time that Jesus really sort of feels the 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 grip of death like mm. starting to swallow him up wow um so yeah it, it, he he felt that so when we come to this and pray this no jesus has gone he went there actually he did go there he <laughs> did literally go there not in gethsemane but on in on the cross in golgotha he he died mm. and he was taken to the grave and he he did go there so he knows what it's like if you're at the edge of death yeah yeah and again it's a reminder isn't it that repentance is something for this life calling yeah. out and asking for mercy and, and that there is an urgency to you if, you if you're not a christian listening you've got to call out to the lord while he may be found yeah i think it says in isaiah mm. you know now is the time for us to be praying like this yeah, because our life is but a breath. We're going to be dead soon, and it's too late then. Like our life is lived. Live your life praying like this. Mm. Yeah, for in death there's no remembrance of you because it'll be too late. Mm. The in Sheol, you're waiting the, the the second coming, and you've not trusted in Jesus. It's too yeah. late. It's too late to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and on that note, and on that bombshell <laughs> of One Republic, um, yeah, I think I think that's helpful, Aaron. Okay, the next episode I've got on my sheet is called Wet Beds, so uh, look forward to that one. Great. Somebody.